Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time we've got the pleasure of watching Technetium 74 playing in a tank that I did not expect to see today. This is the Kruppsteyer Waffenträger, and I thought this was all but lost in World of Tanks. It just seemed to never be coming out, even though I this, think this vehicle has been in the ready at least to go into the game at least for a year. I remember this coming out around about the same time as the, what's it called, the A45, you know, that tier 7 British heavy tank. But I digress, let's focus on what this tank is all about. Technetium plays on the Russian server, he's uploaded this replay on the What Replays website, a massive thank you for that, so that we, European plebs, can get to see the brand new tanks just as they're released. And this vehicle is a combination of a Jagdtiger 88's main armament, which then again is on quite a few different vehicles, the tank destroyer variant of that gun, with 203 millimeters of penetration, 240 alpha damage, and 2000 DPM that this tank has. But the main thing that's special about this tank is it has a fully traversable turret. This is not a semi-traversable turret. It can't only aim 45 degrees to the left, 45 degrees to the right. This thing can aim the whole way round, and it also has eight degrees of gun depression over the back of the tank and over the front of the tank as well. As long as you're not getting bogged down by, I guess, these two vision ports for where I guess a couple of the crew members are going to be sitting in this tank. And so what we find is this vehicle is an absolute little flexible monster at hopefully long ranges, because this vehicle has no armor whatsoever. What does it have immediately at the front of the tank? 20 millimeters at the front of the tank, 10 at the side, and 8 at the rear, and the turret is no better at all. Basically, if you do manage to see one of these, uh, if they ever do come to the European or the North American server, just fire high explosive rounds at it, and you are likely to absolutely decimate it. What I've been finding, I've watched uh, a bunch of replays of this tier 7 German premium tank destroyer and I've noticed that uh, when people do get into these mid to long range engagements, I mean that engagement's of 520 meters, they do seem to be rather nasty. Just to read out a few of the statistics of this vehicle, 1.9 seconds aim time, that's decent indeed. 0.33 accuracy, that's pretty good, but quite a few of the German tank destroyers do do better than that, including the infamous E25, which is also a tier 7 German premium tank destroyer. This vehicle does not get preferential matchmaking, I hasten to add. I have seen a few replays where this vehicle has been against tier 9 tanks, and when you've only got 800 hit points, absolutely no armor, and you're only doing 240 alpha damage with your 88mm gun, you can imagine how this vehicle kind of stacks up when it has to play against higher tiered opponents. It, it can be good if you can keep them at these kind of long ranges, but if you if you fail to keep them at long range, the, the vehicle really doesn't do very well in close quarters combat. And it's quite hard to also keep the engagement at long range as well, because the vehicle is limited to 35 kilometers an hour forwards, 15 kilometers an hour backwards, which is pretty nice considering that you can at least fall back from the combat fairly quickly relative to other tanks. And unfortunately, the power to weight ratio of this tank also sucks as well. It's just over 10. So you aren't going to be able to get up to that top speed limit up even half reasonable slopes. But when this tank is in its environment, i.e. sniping at long range, it does seem to be rather nice. And I can imagine as well, considering how low profile the tank is, that its camera rating must be exceptional. And also the fact that the tank has the fully traversable turret that I was talking about means that you can keep your binoculars and your camo net activated and keep re-engaging your opponents. What is the turret traverse on this tank? I just can't quite see. I think it is 30 degrees a second. 27 degrees a second turret traverse, at least according to Tanks GG. That is rather nice. Most turreted tank destroyers take a long time to turn the turret, and that is not the case with this vehicle. And so that should provide you with quite a lot of flexibility when you combine that with the 8 degrees of gun depression to re-engage your opponents quickly. So all in all, as long as you don't need crazy mobility, you don't need crazy DPM, crazy accuracy, minimal aim time, well the vehicle's still got 1.9 seconds which is pretty good, then this, this is looking like it could be quite a bit of a beast. Somebody who prefers to play the, the mid to long range sniper role. And I tell you what, Technetium is going to show us some fantastic plays right now. Look at what is sneaking into his base. Is that a T-34, an IS-3, a T-44, a T-69, all wanting to come and take him out in the, in the artillery that's left 
while his team of tier 8 medium tanks are pushing in on the other flank and they are actually very low on hit points. It's not looking very good here considering this was a 78 percenter. Hopefully Technician can manage to show these other players on the enemy team uh, a thing or two about this brand new tank and he's only played a couple of games in it. I'm not sure if this was the first game he played in it or the second game he played in it. I did check out a few of his statistics to see if he if this was a one-off or if he's been playing it consistently but I guess time will have to tell. Considering this vehicle literally just came out let's think Moscow time so that's gonna be three. This vehicle came out nine hours ago uh, at least for the Russian server that's the earliest you could have possibly bought it. And I really can't wait to be able to get one for myself on the European server. Look at that. The flexible turret able to aim backwards while running away, or shall we say repositioning his tank, shuts down the tier 7 Japanese heavy tank on the enemy team, the Oni. Will the IS spot him here? It looks like the IS does not spot him. Seriously, even though he fired, that IS must have either a dead command or a terrible crew skill. And this T-34 obviously has six sense as he... Alert, he's alerted to it and he starts to pull backwards, but I don't think it's uh, it's gonna help him Okay, so technetium realizes that when you've got 203 millimeters of penetration You're aiming at a t-34 turret shooting will only give away your position So he waits until the t-34 is around the corner before he starts moving because remember you will have less camera rating when you're moving than when you're stationary so he just wanted to have the t-34 pull back around the corner Hopefully have his artillery slam in a shell before he starts moving again because you really don't want to get spotted. He will get two shot by a T-34 at least half of the time. And he's pretty much going to get two shot half of the time by an IS-3 as well. Well, give or take considering it's got 390 alpha damage and he's got 800 hit points. 800 hit points really doesn't sound like a hell of a lot, does it? But then again, you know, tier 7 tank destroyers and tier 8 tank destroyers don't really get equal kind of... Oh bit of a disappointment there the IS-3 stopped reversing and so it ends up bouncing off his very rounded turret but yeah tier 7 and tier 8 tank destroyers don't really get the same clout of hit points as you do with your tier 9 tank destroyers that's certainly something I noticed when I go up the Soviet heavy tank tree I believe that the SU-100 has got about 580 or something and then you jump up to tier 7 and you've probably got about 850 and then at tier 8 you've got a thousand just over a thousand on the ISU-152 but then you hit the object 704 which I think has got either 1500 or 1600 so there's a gigantic step up from when you go from tier 8 to tier 9 and so you know this this vehicle at tier 7 really isn't going to be the most durable or resilient but then again, if you can try and control the engagement, engage them at mid to long ranges, you should be effective. However, he's certainly not going to have the luxury of that against this T-44, who's on 34% of his hit points, 436 hit points to be exact. So that means that he's going to have to penetrate him twice with this 88mm gun. The T-44 comes around the corner, or not quite. Now he does, aiming at the T-34-2 that's down below him. Instead, he turns around to aim at Technetium, but luckily... The T-34-2 finishes him off, blowing his head clean off before he's able to start to reduce Technetium's health. And he might need all of those 800 hit points to be able to take down these three remaining Tier 8 tanks on the enemy team. So all in all, a completely solid round so far for this tank. 3,200 damage, three kills. That is great for a Tier 7 tank destroyer. And how is he going to be able to handle this situation? There's still an opportunity for a Top Gun. Oh, there it goes. Top Gun gone. Now there's only two tanks left on the enemy team. But then again, his team are very unhealthy. That T-34-2 and the Type 59 are but a one-shot, even for high explosive rounds, probably for the T-34 on the enemy team. And the T-69, that Tier 8 American autoloading medium tank, will be able to take out both of them within a couple of seconds of each other with the shell delay. Fortunately, the Type 59 puts a round into the T-69, which reduces him to 207 hit points. That should mean that Technetium will kill him pretty much, I'd say, about 60, maybe 65% of the time. He'd have to roll 206 out of 240 to be able to not one-shot this T-69. However, he's not going for the T-69. He's caught the T-34 out in the open. That fairly nice aim time of 1.9 seconds. And just look how flexible this turret is. It's just beautiful to have this flexible turret and to still have a fairly devastating gun. It's, it's certainly not the most devastating. This tank has, I think it's 20% less DPM than the Yag Panther at Tier 7. And it's got 35% less than the E25, or alternatively the Yag Tiger 88, which is a whole tier above it. But when you consider that the Yag Tiger 88 
can only meet tier 9 tanks, just like this vehicle, then the two become a lot more comparable. Will he be able to kill the T-69? Oh my lord! We called the low roll, leaving him on 1% of his hit points. 7 hit points to be exact. That's rather unfortunate, and that means that the T-69 puts a couple of rounds into his tank. But it looks like the T-69 is running away. Maybe he didn't have all of his rounds. Did he just bounce off the turret of the T-69 as he runs away from the T-34 too? So all that Technetium really has to do right now is to make sure that he uses the two seconds window of opportunity from the first shell from the T-69 to be able to put in the killing blow. He could probably even load high explosive rounds and fire at pretty much anywhere of the T-69. But then again, you know, an 88mm is not the largest of caliber, so it could be a little bit tricky. Oh gosh, the T-34-2 goes around the corner, gets shut down by the T-69, meaning he's reloaded. Will Technetium be able to get the killing blow? He comes around the corner. Yeah! Great stuff, right into the side of this turret, dealing the final 7 damage of the game, picking up his 5th kill and putting his total damage to over 4,282. What a result. So Technetium certainly demonstrated the attractive characteristics of the Krupp Steyr Waffenträger. It does look like with that fully traversable turret and 8 degrees of gun depression, that this thing might be one to look out for if you like your sneaky German tank destroyers. And oh wow, look, it's caught some helmets on the back of the tank. That's pretty funky as well. And we're just going to have to wait and pray that this vehicle is included in the European and North American advent calendar. Anyway, let's just take a quick look at the post-game stats. So Technetium 74 picked up his ace tanker, and I'm not sure if this was his first or second ever game in the tank. I went and stalked his statistics a little bit, and picks up a high caliber for the 4,200 damage that he dealt, which is very respectable for a tier 7 tank, and 1,456 base experience points. This is something that a lot of you will be interested in. Does this premium tank make credits? And yeah, 81,000 credits profit for 4,200 damage isn't that bad, but it's certainly not as much as you would probably get on a tier 8 vehicle. But the bonus that you can get just for playing a premium tank of 437 here will certainly help out your crew training if you love your German tank destroyers. And so there you have it, a sneak peek of the Kruppsteher Waffenträger. Thank you so much to Technetium74 for uploading this on the Russian server. I'm not sure if you're even going to understand what I'm saying, but spasiba balshoi. Uploading this on what replays it allows all of us European and North American plebs to get a little look at what hopefully we've got to look forward to in the advent calendar. And so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. It really helps the channel out. And also today is Sunday, which means I'm going to be doing another Tech Tree Showcase. But unfortunately, lots of you want to see me play the Fosh 155 line, and I don't have any of the tier 6, 7, 8 or 9 French tank destroyers and so I'm going to have to rebuy those but I don't have any credits at the moment. And I think it's the same case for the Soviet artillery tree as well. I believe I only have the tier 8 and tier 10 self-propelled gun so I'm going to have to do that at a later date. But in third place and vehicles that I certainly can play today, I'm going to be running down the Japanese medium tank line so thank you Lucas for that suggestion. And so if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday the 4th of December then come along on twitch.tv forward slash quick you, baby to see a full rundown of all of the Japanese medium tanks in the game. And if you haven't seen one of my tech tree showcases before, they're basically like mini tank reviews for every single vehicle along the line and I also play them, culminating this week in the STB1. And let me know in the comments what you think about the Kruppsteher Waffenträger. Do you think that it looks absolutely awesome or do you think that it has too many limitations and it's going to be fairly mediocre? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.